What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. We've got a mess down here. I need to be uh, I need to be organizing and cleaning up, but first, I need some coffee. Ah, coffee and breakfast acquired. One more stop. Check this out, check this out. How cool is this? Look, you just pull up. You don't even have to do anything. It reads my license plate. We gotta keep the old white lightning looking nice and fresh. Also, if you haven't had the Dunkin' Egg and Cheese wake-up wraps, ah, they're so good, love them. All right, enough messing around. We got our coffee. We had to have a little fun because what we're about to go do is not enjoyable or really fun at all. Yes, I am talking tackle organization. Definitely not one of the most exciting things to do, but I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I had extra. Um, I usually take extra stuff and throw it in my truck, but the problem is after a whole season of using it, it ends up in Walmart bags or it ends up all over the truck on the floor down here in my basement. So I need to organize some of this and I thought, you know what? You all might as well grab some popcorn and a beverage, sit down and we'll do some fish and talk while I'm going through some of the stuff I've got and some of the ways that I store it some of the ways that haven't worked for me, so it'll hopefully help some of you. So uh, enough yapping, I'm gonna throw this on the tripod, let's talk tackle. All right, didn't have some super cool way of doing this, so we're going old school, on the floor, gonna talk through how I would organize all this, give you all some uh, some ideas, and hopefully it helps you in case you're struggling keeping your extra tackle and mess uh, put away. So, let's dive in. Yeah, you can see this ends up being a mess. The way I used to do this was, uh, one of the easiest ways was the Plano 3700 size, the one compartment is what I used to like to use uh, because I like to keep my plastics in the bags. I don't like to take my plastics out and put them in, uh, you know, Planos like this or whatever type of box you use that has the little compartments because the scents and the juices and stuff, once they sit in the sun, oftentimes they'll melt the plastic, it's gross, it gets all gunky. So I personally always like to keep my plastics in the bag whenever possible. And I used to literally just do this. That in there, those in there, some of these in here, some of that, so on and so forth until I got it all filled up. And that was the way I would do it. That way everything was in here, nice and organized. I could look through, great, right? Well, as somebody who is primarily a bank angler, that takes up quite a bit of space. And after getting a much better tackle bag, I used to use a square one like this. This happens to be one of the square tackle warehouse bags that I picked up. Um, now this is just a, a bag for extra stuff. So just like this, once I get Planos and other things loaded up, I'll keep them in here. And you can fit like five, I don't know, five or six of these in here. So it's a great way if you like to keep crankbaits uh, in these and other soft plastics in these, you can line them up. It's also got pockets like here, a big pocket in the front, pockets on the side. I don't know if I've got stuff in here. So I used it a few times on the boat. Some stuff hidden back here. What is it? It's like Christmas. Oh, Tackle Sprinker, Bluegill with Chartreuse. Oh, and that one. That color works. I caught, what, a four and a half pounder on that color this year. Huge fan of the Tekel Sprinker frogs. Great for folks just starting out frog fishing. Cast it out, reel it in. They're a ton of fun. Oh, some of those Strike King spinner baits that I really like. Those are the Premier Plus. Three eighths is my go-to. That's some bluegill color. Love it. Also, some Tokyo rigs and some spin shots. I'm still not sold on the Tokyo rig. But anyway, a bag like this is a great way to store extra soft plastics. And heck, you could even just take extra soft plastic bags and just throw them in here. The problem is there's no organization. So if you're out fishing and you want to, you know, try to find something, you've got to rifle through all this. So one way that I uh, used to do it was to go with plastic Ziploc bags or Target, Walmart, whatever sort of plastic sacks. Now the issue with these is they rip super easy, right? Taking them in and out of the truck, they rip, they're not very sturdy, you get a hole in it, you're losing baits. It's just not efficient. So one thing they've come out with, are these things, they call them money bags. Bass Mafia was the first one I got. I got a huge one. This thing is like, I don't know, double extra large. You've probably seen it on my John boat when I go out. That way I've got all my stuff. It's in one bag. Yes, it is kind of overkill, but I'd rather have stuff out with me on the boat or in my truck. That way if I need it, I can swap out or you know go grab it as opposed to leaving all my extra stuff at home and not having anything that I need. Now you can see here, Tackle Warehouse came out with their version as well. It's a little bit smaller, but it's the same nice thick plastic on it. Um, you can see up at the top, it's got like a felt on the inside where the zipper is there. So it's nice, they zip up. Um, they do also have like a really tough Ziploc at the top there. Um, so again, the same thing uh, as the uh, Bass Mafia, and you can actually see, they uh, co-branded or created it, whatever, Tackle Warehouse with Bass Mafia. So those are really nice. And then more recently, on a video you saw these, and in case you were wondering, uh, six cents, I didn't get one of the bags. Uh, I emailed their customer service, and within a couple weeks, they made it right and sent me my other bag. So 
I noticed theirs are a little bit softer plastic. It's not as thick. I don't know if it's going to be as durable or not. Um, I mean, it seems to be. They also said theirs are reinforced on the outside with felt. So as you can see there, instead of being just like this with the Taco Warehouse bags, just like that, they've reinforced it with felt. Now these kind of bags are great because you can put really in these whatever you want. You could throw extra lures, soft plastics, you know, if I had extra um, spinner baits, whatever. You could throw them all in there. Rand Dizzle actually has been uh, organizing his tackle this way. He's got like a Rubbermaid container in his truck and then has like jig trailers in one, creatures in one, worms in one, you know, six, seven of these bags and just throws them all in one big uh, Rubbermaid deal in the back of his truck. That way he's got them all organized. They're all in separate bags. He knows what he's got. Um, but this is a pretty nice way. Then, of course, if you have extra crankbaits and stuff, there's not really a plastic bag you can use for those. So some sort of box like this, this is just all extra stuff. But in the truck, you could literally have just a couple of these, throw them under the seat or in your trunk, um, and you can carry a whole bunch of extra crankbaits. That way, when you've got your little backpack with you or whatnot, you're not taking all this stuff that you may or may not use, but it's in the truck. That way, if you need it, you can always go back and switch. So for example, if I wanted to do it this way with this bag, I can get two of these big, huge crankbait boxes in, um, a couple of these little thin 3,700 size, um, just one compartment so I could have soft plastics, extra cranks, and then I could have my backpack with other stuff in it as well. You've got side storage, so that's one way to do it. And then you could also have these just kind of separate in your truck for your extra soft plastics. So let's look through and see some of the things I had in here. Oh, the Nico rig. Kind of new to me, um, I had the most success on this quiver uh, for missile baits. I think they originally made this for the Nico rig, but it's uh, kind of a regular looking worm, but on the back of it, I guess you would say kind of shaped tail. Worked really good, had a lot of success on those. Um, that was the color that I really liked. Super bug, kind of a green pumpkin, black and blue. We'll throw those in there. The Gary Yamamoto Zacco, awesome chatterbait trailer. Um, these are the new ones, I haven't got to use those yet. Those are the ones with the paddle tail. I've still been using the old kind. Those are great. Some big worms by X-Zone. That's their 11-inch Blitz Worm. I did have success on that. Um, I like the X-Zone stuff. They've got some cool stuff up there. Of course, the Bass Pro Shops Ribbon Tail Worm as well. Great. Flukes. You all saw a number of different videos of me using the Fluke this year. This was the Sexy Shad. Had a, luck, a lot of luck on that. I caught, I think, what, a 4-pounder on it? A uh, 3-pounder. Like the, uh, the Zoom Fluke. What else we got? Of course, the Rage Bug. This is the Baby Rage Bug. A little bit smaller version. Uh, a little bit downgraded. It's a three inch from the regular Rage Bug, but great, great Texas rig. Speaking of Texas rig, you can't talk about that without the uh, the Sweet Beaver. And this is a new color. I've got a whole unboxing to do for, for Reaction Innovation stuff, but this is a color that they call Warmouth. Check that out. Might be able to see it here a little bit better. It's got some June Bug on it, some Chartreuse, some Green Pumpkin, just a really neat, odd color all blended together. A bunch of weird stuff. Love that. Then, of course, Skeet Reese, the deal. I think these are underrated. And that's what they made them for is a bladed jig. Really cool. I've talked about them this year. I don't know. I think they're a pretty cool little trailer for the chatterbait. I don't really hear anybody talking about them, but they've got a real light tail. It just works with the chatterbait really well. I think they're cool. Some old school stick baits. How about these? These are X Factor. I don't even know who makes them. What's cool about these is, can you see that right there, right by my finger? These are uh, made for the wacky rig and they actually have the O-ring already embedded inside the plastic. I don't know of any other companies that do this. Um, it's a pretty cool idea, but you can see there, O-ring is already up inside of it. How cool is that? Uh, just an old pack that I have. Oh, Big Bite Baits make these. I don't know how old they are, super old bag. I think I got them from Gander on sale for like a buck out of their bargain bin, but. Some TRD hogs, I like those. Y'all have heard me talk about those for the Ned Rig. Some more Zoom, Super Salty Fluke, Silver Rainbow. Ah, some more of the uh, the Sweet Beavers. These will be in the unboxing soon. Old Donkey Punch, 4.2 inch, and then what's this one? Ah, Dirty Wizard, love it. Green Pumpkin with Purple Flake in it. I absolutely love that color. Some Chompers, y'all saw me throw those on a jig. It's a Hula Grub, uh, the Twin Tail Hula Grub. Love those. Ooh, one of my all-time favorite weighted Wacky Rig Worms. 4.75 inch Rattlesnake from Grande Bass. Some more large worms, the uh, the old monster 10 and a half inch green pumpkin. Biospawn Vile Craw. I didn't get a throw of these at all this year, but uh, Tackle Junkie talks about them. I picked up a couple things from Biospawn to try out, um, but just didn't ever get the chance to throw those. Topwater, some of the old horny toads. Love those on the back of a buzz bait. They're great, just weightless on a, a hook as well. I personally like them as a buzz toad on a buzz bait even more, but 
Then we've got the Rage Toad, very similar. Green pumpkin, large profile, has a really good kicky, ploppy, bubbly action. Throw it out and reel it in. Some of the X-Zone Swammers, I've got to use those quite a bit this year. Uh, the, uh, the bluegill color worked well, but that's a little three and a half inch. Some of the man's jelly worms, I threw those on a weighted wacky rig. Look pretty cool. Um, I like those. No real strange special action, but on a weighted wacky rig, did pretty cool. Ooh, how about some man bear pig? Very underrated. Again, I don't hear anybody talking about those from Reaction Innovations. Some more worms, some more flukes. What is this? Just some regular sticko Bass Pro stick baits. So you can essentially just throw all of your extra stuff in there. Look at that. Everything that we just talked about and went through all in one of these. Now, there's no real organization to this, but I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of how much you can really throw in one of these. It's great because it's clear, so once you do get it uh, organized, you know, if I had all craws in one or all worms in one, you can see exactly what you have. So these little things are great. Now, another way to do it, like I said, if you're keeping stuff just thrown in your truck, you can get a ton of stuff in one of these too. This is from Flambo. This is a little bit different size. You can see here it's more of a square shape, um, but this is also for soft plastics. And this is initially how I kept all my extra stuff. Uh, I would just keep a couple of these in my, my car. And you can really just keep all of them in the bags. Most of them will fit in there this way. So you can see like a whole bunch of one of the greatest Texas rig lures ever made, the Berkeley Havoc Pit Boss. Um, a whole bunch of those, some Zoom stuff in here. What is that? The Z-Craw in black light color, black and purple. Black and purple is so underrated, but you get the idea. You can uh, store them completely in here as well. It locks and it's got a little handle on it so you can carry it. These are pretty cool too. So again, just a different way if you want to take these, throw them in the back of your truck, all of your extras. This is another one from Tackle Warehouse. It's a Plano bag. Um, I think the KVD Speed Bags is kind of what this is um, done off of. I've got one KVD speed bag around here somewhere. I couldn't find it, but uh, this is a soft bag. So it's kind of the same principle as this thing, except it's a soft bag that you can carry with you on the boat, have all of your extra soft plastics in here. So what this looks like when you're loading it up. So this is just a, I guess, kind of a regular size bag. This is some of the Gookum Bates Bandito bugs, but you can see there, it's not really going to fit that way. It's a little bit too uh, skinny this way. About knock the camera over so it's going to be things going this way in here and depending on the bag like you could throw these up in there like that so on and so forth get this all lined up and then it's got this speed zipper deal where you can zip everything up in there so again just another option another way to kind of store all this and there they are again absolutely one of the best texas rig soft plastics so there you go just to give you an idea everything that i had poured out here uh what basically three walmart bags full of stuff overflowing i got in one of these tackle warehouse bags one little kvd essentially speed bag deal and then one of the smaller sizes from six cents all of that stuff thrown into these and this is even lures that are still in the package as you can see um, i could have even condensed more if i had you know like my tackle bag but a very good idea of seeing how much you can condense all this stuff down in, literally, where I'm at here. Just a couple bags. We'll get fancy and pop this off. That's what you're looking at there. How nice is that? Pretty cool. I like the storage. Um, this is the way I'm going to carry my extra stuff. These little plastic bags. Throw them in the back of your truck or car, and you can really get a ton of stuff thrown into all these. Look, I've got extra hooks, extra lures, all kinds of extra soft plastics. So I hope that gives you all some ideas on how you can store your extra tackle. I know some folks said that um, they've got like cheap shoe box, like those clear plastic kind of rubber made shoe box deals from Walmart stored baits that way. There's a number of different ways you can do it. And if you've got a different way that really works for you, comment below and let me know or let all the other fishing friends out there know. It goes so far. The fishing community really can be a good place. People helping out each other. I love that when all you fishing friends do that in the comments below. So comment below and let me know how you store all of your extra tackle. Now tonight's subscribe fishing friend is Matt Eckersley. Matt, thank you very much for watching and thank you everybody else out there. I've got more giveaways planned. Um, I've got a shipment coming this week. Uh, a bunch of stuff from Carl's. Never ordered from them, but I've got a bunch of cool beginner stuff, some boxes, things that are going to be going to all of you as a, a way for me to say thanks because we're creeping up on 100,000. That's a big deal for some dummy in Iowa to have 100,000 subscribers. I know, strange, but we're getting there. So uh, that, I've got some more gear reviews coming soon. Of course, if there's anything that you all want to see, comment below and let me know. I love hearing from all of you, but I got to get the rest of this picked up and put away. More videos this week. Going to try to have a couple more. So uh, thank you all for watching. Until next time.